to the rule, gems of biodiversity. Hope it is uh, not too difficult to understand and perhaps no questions needed to be asked. Right, as you know, a rule is one of a set of uh, explicit or understood regulations or principles. understood regulations or principles. In other words, it's a usually very generalization. However, there are exceptions to the rule. As no rule, as the rule is not absolute. Well, in life sciences, biological rules describe patterns seen in animals and plants, often as eco-geographical rules about the distribution of species around the world. An example is Bergman's rule, which states that within a broadly distributed taxonomic group, populations and species of larger size are found in colder environments and species of smaller size are found in warmer regions. Another example is Foster's rule, or the island rule, which states members of a species get smaller or bigger depending on the resources available in the environment. However, there is some skepticism among biogeographers about the usefulness of general rules. As you would have noticed on the two examples that have been just given, the rule did not take into consideration the genetic component. As we already heard from earlier speakers, genetics and environment play equally important role. And therefore, there will be some exceptions to the rule. I uh, just refresh our memory a little bit. Uh, biodiversity can simply be defined as the variety and variability among living organisms and the ecological complexes in which they occur. In simple words, it is the totality of genes, species, and ecosystem in a region. And biodiversity or biological diversity comprises three components generally that is, ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. In language, as we are all aware, there are exceptions to the rules of grammar. In, norm, in the normal way, we said, I am or I was a scientist, eh? singular. An exception is if I were a scientist, so this is an exception. Eh? Uh, both are correct, there is no such thing as been wrong. Uh, likewise, there are exceptions to biological principles or biological rules. I think the easiest way to recognize the exceptions to the rule are the oddity and novelty. 
odd and novel, very unusual. For example, is sorry, don't take a point. You can see the mark. This uh, conjoined durian fruit, which is odd, isn't it? And then we have on the other side a soft eye fly whose eyes are located at the end of long stalk. Uh, so they're quite different. Right, we are familiar with the phenomenon known as Siamese twins in human or animals. However, in plants, conjoined flowers are also present in orchids, hibiscus, and other plants. But one of these exceptional phenomena is the possibility of exploiting it to develop new variety. Uh, from the animal world, we know that generally animals lay their eggs on surface. However, the lacewing, which is an insect, lays the eggs on a slender stalk about one centimeter long. So the question is, how does it do it? Or why do they do it? I don't think there is answer at the moment, maybe for a change for today's uh, dialogue session. One of you probably may provide us with possible answers as to how it does it and why does it do it that way. It's an engineering problem or it's a physical problem. Eh? So think about it, how you can solve this problem, let us know at the dialogue session. Right, another example, we know that when we swim, or when animals swim, they normally swim with the ventral downward. However, in the back swimmers, the aquatic parks, they swim upside down. This is a good example of a counter shading, making the bugs or the insects less conspicuous to predators and prey. But the light color black seen from below blends into the water surface and sky. On the other hand, the rest of the body is darker and when seen from above, blends with the bottom of the water body. So this is a survival feature. Right, let's move on to look at some examples of butterflies and, and moths. A uh, general characteristic of butterflies is they rest with the wings closed in an upright position above the body. And moths rest with the wings held in a horizontal or roof-like position. So, so in this diagram, Another characteristic of moth is that they are nocturnal inhabitants, <coughs> as this one. However, they are moths which are diurnal, they fly by the day. So the question is, do these day flying and night flying moths have different kind of biological crop? <coughs> well, biological crop <coughs> is an internal crop that is fundamental to all living organisms. It enables an organism 
to anticipate periodical changes in the environment. For example, our body is set to a 24-hour circadian clock, known as circadian rhythms, and is governed by circadian genes and clock proteins. Yet another characteristic of butterflies and moths is that the caterpillars are phytophagous, named that is, they feed on plants. However, they are exceptions. Some caterpillars actually feed on are carnivores. They feed on aphids and other hosts. Yet another characteristic is that the adult butterflies and moths are fluid feeders. That is, they feed on nectar, exudate, and the like. They are also exception in the feeding habit. A group of moths has been reported to feed to suck blood from mammals. In fact, eight species of this genus, Elliptra, have been reported to vampirize mammals, including humans in the world. Right back to some plants, you know from standard textbook that photosynthesis is characteristic of plants. Now, plants obtain most of their energy from sunlight via photosynthesis. An exception is found in the parasitic plants such as Rafflesia, which has lost the ability to photosynthesize. These parasitic plants derive their nutritional requirements from another living plant. Right. Again, in standard textbook, botanical textbook or biological textbook, dicotyledon flowers are characterized by the presence of five petals. If you look at these two examples, both have five petals. An exception will be the reduction in or decrease in the number of petals. Four <coughs> in this case, and four also in this case, for the desert rose as well as the jewels of Opa. The opposite can also occur, namely, an increase in the number of petals. Normally, five, this has got seven, and the other one, the strict rhododendron, Entron, has six petals. It's exception to the general characteristic. Okay, the question is, what caused these exceptions? An easy explanation will be, it is due to mutation. And if it's common enough, we say that it has elevated mutation rate. And if it is particularly common in a given place, we said it is in a mutational uh, hotspot. But this, however, brings us to the other question. What are the causes uh, for, uh, to, to bring about this mutation? Is environmental factors such as climatic change involved, or there are some other factors? Uh, these are the things that I have just found recently. So we, at the moment, have no answer, and maybe some people can carry out experiments to determine the factors involved. Uh, like the conjoined flowers, the exceptional flower type can be exploited to develop new variety. Another exception in plant life is the phenomenon of uh, apoptosis. This is, as we know, Sexual reproduction is characteristic of higher plants. However, in apomixis, it is replaced by asexual reproduction. And that is to say, there is no fertilization involved. An example is in mangosteen, which produces a recalcitrant seed, which is a new cellular asexual embryo. 
Another interesting exception in plant life is male papaya bearing fruit. Uh, for some who do not eat papaya quite often, but many may not know that papaya is determined by three sex forms. That is, female, male, and hermaphroda. And the, the, the condition is regulated by an incipient XY chromosome system. Here, the Y chromosome contains a small specific region that controls expression of male or homoprotite uh, morph, morph, morphological types. Due to some genetic or environmental causes, some of the dominant flowers within the male inflorescence may have fully developed pistils, therefore resulting in a hermaphrodite flower and an overall male fruit-bearing phenotype. Male, male flower is this one. Yet another exception is uh, <coughs> plants developing in the air. The condition known as Wybitari. In, in this case, reproduction is through embryos such as shoots of bobels, and the plants arise from buds or seedlings that have formed or germinated while still on the parent plant. Not too sure. But moving a little bit to the animal world, we know from our textbook uh, lessons that frogs and toads characteristically have a free swimming tempo during their life history, so they need water. However, some frogs, such as Philautus in Malaysia, undergo complete metamorphosis within the egg without free swimming tempo. Frognets emerge from the egg rather than as swimming tadpoles. For this is a process in evolution which enable the animals to conquer the land. So they dispense of the water body and then live happily in the land. <coughs> Another phenomenon known as new tini or pitomorphy insects. This is the retention of juvenile features in an adult organism. And these are adult females compared to the adult male with the wings. The adult females do not have the wings and they still retain the uh, larval form, the juvenile form. So this process is, significant, is a significant evolutionary change that can occur without little genetic change. The more extreme case of exception in reproduction in vertebrates is known as partenogenesis. This is a mode of asexual reproduction in which the offspring are produced by females without the genetic contribution of a male. Examples of true partenogenesis are found only in snakes and lizards, and not in other vertebrates. But we move on from the animal and plant world to a little bit on exceptions in genetic material. We know that the, uh, genet the rule of genetics will state that a gain in genetic material is deleterious, is harmful. Right? An example of this is Down syndrome, uh, in which the child or the person possesses 21 or uh, 23 copies of uh, chromosome 21, known as the condition known as trisomy 21. And the condition results in mild to moderate intellectual disability. And the average IQ of a young adult with Down syndrome is only 50. Another example of gain in genetic material being harmful is the condition known as Feinfelder syndrome. 
in which the male individual has two X chromosome and a Y chromosome. <coughs> the symptoms <coughs> are typically more severe if they are three or more X chromosomes. It occurs at the rate of one in 500 to one in 1,000 live male birds. It causes a male to have some physical traits unusual for males. Right. The opposite is also true. That there is a loss of genetic material, which is also deleterious. As we know, a normal female mammal, including human, possesses two X chromosomes. Human and large mammals with a single X chromosome are infertile, that is the deleterious effect. And this condition in humans is known as Turner syndrome, in which the person possesses 45 chromosomes with a single X. It occurs one in 2,000 to one in 5,000 females at birth. However, in rats, the condition of XO monosomy or X monosomy, the presence of a single X, are fertile. Right? The rule said you lose one X chromosome, you are infertile. In this case, the rats with one single chromosome, a female rat with one single chromosome, are fertile. So this is actually an exception to the rule. Hmm? And the, we now know that the, the fertility, despite the presence of a single X chromosome, is due to short gestation period as well as short maturation period. Okay? If you remember, the elephant gestation period maybe two years, human about 10, 10 months. In this case, gestation period is only about 20, 22 days. Okay? So very short gestation period, a very short maturation period, uh, and because of that, the deleterious uh, uh, the effects are not expressed in time. Right? They may suffer some, you know, some defects, but not manifested. And then we look, move, and also there is an example, the exception to the gain of chromosome number, in which the animal is also not seem to be affected adversely. Uh, there are many cases of the presence of B chromosome, or in other words, extra chromosome or accessory chromosome, uh, without apparent deleterious effects. Uh, again, coming back to the standard textbook, we have often been taught that each eukaryote chromosome has one centromere. Right? As you look in the top figure, each one of them has a centromere. However, there, there are chromosomes without centromere. And these are known as the holocentric uh, chromosome. And this holocentric chromosome binds to microtubules <coughs> along the entire length and moves proxide to the pole from the metaphase plate. And the holocentric protein is required for kinetochore function. Examples of the occurrence of holocentric chromosome is found quite commonly in nematodes, excepting the trigurates, which has chromosome with a single centromere. The example that I showed here Holocentric chromosome of filaria parasites. But the last example I would like to share with you relate to enzymes. And those who are biochemists will know that enzymes occur in different forms. They can be monomeric, dimeric, trimeric, or tetrameric. In the case of monomeric enzyme, the isoenzyme pattern of the heterozygote will represent a simple mixture of the two forms occurring by themselves. And therefore, the homozygote will have a single band
zygotes will have a single man, the heterozygotes will have two men. That is a rule for monomeric uh, enzyme. Right. An example of a monomeric enzyme is phosphogluconeutase or PGM. And therefore, the heterozygous individual will be expected to possess two bands, yeah? one for each allele. And a study by some years ago found the presence of only two banded electrophoretic pattern in a population of mosquito. And this can be conveniently interpreted as permanent heterocyte because there are two bands instead of a single band. So that was the conclusion or that was the reason. The conclusion for that uh, particular study, however, with luck and knowledge of biochemistry and genetics, we have been subsequently been able to show that the two bented forms are, are actually homozygous and determined by as due to host translational multiplication. So these two bands, uh, homozygous, these are the heterozygous. So therefore, uh, if we just follow strictly to the rule, the interpretation will not be correct. Okay? Well, the post-translational modification phenomenon regarding phosphocucomutase is found in most Tulisin mosquitoes. And therefore, if you do an electrophoresis of these Tulisin mosquitoes, the heterocytes would all have more than two bands. By post-translational modification is simply a chemical modification of a protein's either the structure or the configuration after its translation, that is after protein synthesis. It may therefore alter the protein function. And in fact, this has been applied for the study of uh, heart disease, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, and diabetes, trying to find out whether post translational modifications do indeed play a part in a particular disease. All right, I want to make it short. Uh, the take home message, I think, I have not been technical, trying to give you some examples. It are simple, and exceptions are the gems of biological sciences. An exception, and an, an exception, is a great source of new discovery. And in order to recognize exceptions, we need to be observant, have a perfect mind, and unknowledgeable. As the sayings go, in the fields of observation, chance favors only the prepared mind and fortune favors the prepared mind. And in scientific pursuit and in life, as already been stated earlier by other speakers, I just want to quote Yogi Bhara Zato, it is not what we don't know that hurts us. It is what we don't know we don't know that hurts us. So that we have to really know what we do not know and therefore we will find answers to the questions. Okay? So with that, I end my talk and thank you and all best wishes. For